guys welcome to learn with w3 schools and today we're going to talk more about xml and xpath now if you are following my channel and if you have been learning xml with me i have previously we have talked about xml dom parser and http requests all these three have been talked about in my recent videos and again i have already a detailed video on xml so don't follow do don't forget to check those out again the link is in description or the click on the eye icon you can find the latest video wonderful now my name is dr shan as i said let's begin learning xml from this point forward and today we're going to specifically talk about something called xpath now xpath is a major element in an xslt standard xslt is actually used to convert our xml document into an html and so on and so forth and basically able to display it we're going to talk about this in the next video much more detailed and i am going to make a much bigger video a complete course on this uh, using all these major topic about xpath as well as xslt so don't forget to subscribe and follow along because you will gonna finding these courses very soon along xml dom ajax as well so these future lectures on xml are on the way they're already recorded and if you want to get an early access on that hit that membership and they are already i've already recorded them and uploaded on my memberships so you can find those lectures much quicker than other on my membership page so don't forget to go inside my youtube channel become a member for my channel uh, support so that I can keep on making these videos and you can get early access to these specific videos. Okay, so now let's talk about XML path. XPath is a major element, as I said, in the XLT standard. XPath can be used to navigate through elements and attributes in an XML document. The primary reason is that it allows us to navigate through elements and attributes. So using this, we can navigate and check all the XML document attributes and its tags. So that's why it's quite important. Okay, so if you look into this figure, is this defines that if you are using various different things like x query, x pointer, x link, x alt, they are all combined with something called xpath. So xpath is actually at the center of all these five four different technologies and terms we're gonna use. And if you wanna learn about all these four, as I said, I will be making more videos. Some of them already recorded on my members only page. So don't forget to follow along and become a member so you can get early access to my lectures okay now um, let's talk more about xpath okay so as xpath is a syntax for defining parts of an xml document okay meaning that it is a syntax for defining specific parts of an xml document this path uses expressions to navigate in an xml document as compared to other parsers this uses expressions we're going to talk about it a little bit in later on so xpath contains a library for standard functions it also it can is can is type of a library it's considered as a library um, but it actually contains certain standard functions that we use that allow us to do all these operations xpath is a major element in xlt and x query okay so xpath is a w3 consortium recommended so it's a recommended if you want to become a proper web developer you know the w3 consortium or worldwide web consortium highly recommends that you follow the xpath so that you can define parts of xml document according to w3 standard okay and use various different functions to traverse and navigate the xml document that have been provided through this xpath that's why it's at the center point of an entire xml hierarchy now let's talk more about what the xpath expressions are xpath uses path expressions to select nodes or node sets in an xml document okay so do keep a mind on this select nodes or what we call node sets in an xml document these path expressions look very much like expressions you see when you work with a traditional computer file system so an xpath expression can be used in javascript it can be used in java that's more important for me we're going to talk a little bit about java in future lessons so probably we'll traverse use xml using java and then we need to use this xpath for that anyway so it uses an xml schema php python c c plus plus and lots of other languages so this xpath expressions can be used in all of these languages that's why it's so important that's why it's been recommended by the w3 consortium that you must follow this to define your xml document properly so that that xml document can later on be used by all of these languages okay so the xpath is used in xlt as well xpath is a major element in xlt standard X with xpath knowledge you can you will be able to take great advantage of xsl 
okay so as i said i'm going to talk about this xlt in my next video so don't forget to follow along now let's see an example of xpath and see how it is used so xpath is used in xslt xpath is a major element in xslt standard with xpath knowledge you will be able to take a great advantage of this excel okay so if you want to learn more about xlt you must understand how xpath is working so the, let's see an example of it to get a better overview of how we do so for example we use the following xml document so we have a standard xml document we define a bookstore and then it contains book one book two book three book four with each book having an attribute uh, category book category and book category with certain diff tags inside it almost all tags have an st standard hierarchy okay so this becomes the typical xml document um, in the table above uh, so in the table above we have listed some xpath expressions and the results of these expressions so uh, based on this table uh, uh, based on this xml document there's a table being given below sorry my bad below, table below and there are expressions here remember we said that xml is basically based on ex expressions so xpath uses expressions to select nodes or node sets in xml document okay so these are some of the expressions that are available which we can use based on this xml document so the first expression being is backslash book backslash book one okay seems very simple so this basically means that hey i have a book which is this one and i want to access it so in other words which belongs to this bookstore tag so we have a main bookstore tag inside the bookstore we have a book so the expression we wrote is that hey backslash bookstore which becomes the main root node as we call it then slash book and then index number this selects the first book element that is the child of a bookstore element okay so this becomes our standard expression we wrote the root node backslash book one so this means that hey i have a main root node called bookstore inside this bookstore i have a book i have a book i have a book i have a book each book as per x, x path is on a specific index number okay so we don't know how many books there are there can be five there can be 10 there can be 20 all right so we start with a one so this first this book or the first entry is actually on the first index okay so here we say hey because i want to access the first book so we use one here so this selects the first element that is the child of the bookstore then we can use bookstore last method so now here notice that we are using another expression here called last instead of providing it an index number we are providing it a last function okay so we're using the round brackets so now we're saying hey select the last book element that is the child of a bookstore element so selecting the first element will basically allow me to select uh, by just typing one it will allow me to select the first element by selecting uh, using the last function we can select the last function similarly i can say go to the bookstore again the root node go inside a book and then use last minus one selects the last one uh, but one book element that is the child of a bookstore element okay so it's going to select the last minus ones means second last elements then we can use bookstore book position function less than three now this becomes more interesting so now we are using one more function called position selects the first two books elements that are children of the bookstore elements okay so now what we're doing is i'm ne i just need to select the two books for example or top five books or the top five entries in fact these are not marked with respect to category we are saying hey i just need the top two books in my entry so the entry of top two books is important so what i do is uh, in this case one two three four we have four books available right so i just want to fetch the first two books so these first two books basically i want to fetch so in order to fetch these two books again this is on index one this is on index two this is on index number three so we remember that okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to use another function called position and with a relational operator called less than three this means find me the books that are less than three index so it will find the book on index number one okay it will find me book number on index number two because it's less than it means that less than three so three is actually an exclusive number it will always remain one. hence it will return the first two books so we will get book one and book two the first two books are returned to me so in this case the first two books are our cooking category book and our children category book these two first books will be returned to us got it so similarly there are various different expressions that we can write so now we have something called double backslash so here now we are using double backslash and we are saying title at the red language so what this basically means is that hey double backslash title at the lens so it selects all the title elements that have the attribute name language so if you note i have 
uh, various different sub thing, uh, sub tags, right? So we have title, we have title, we have title, we have title. So all these books have title inside it, and they have an attribute called lang. Okay, so then since we have this attribute called lang here, we have a lang English and we have a language English. So now means that first we need title, and we can have a lang attribute. So we are saying to this guy, okay, I need to find all the books that have language set as English. So we can have language set to any other variable as well. So now we're saying, hey, find me all the books, sorry, for find me all the books that have this lang element. So it selects the title element that have an attribute named lang. You can specify that find me all the books that have title at the rate lang means we need this attribute language is equals to English. So now it will find me all the books that have as an English value. Okay, so if you come back here, you would notice that ah, we have language as an English, we have language as an English, we have language as an English. I said, ah, okay, wonderful, we understand that. So if you want to find a specific book that is in French or in German, for example, and you're using that variable, you can easily use this expression here to access those elements. Okay, wonderful. So this is how basically we progress. Now we can further even go, hey, go inside the root book. Find me a book that has a price greater than 3500. Okay, so note how we are writing the expressions. We can customize and write any expressions that we want based on the content and the tags we have in our HTML. In this case, we are saying go inside the book root. There's a books inside this my XML. Find me the book that's price is greater than 3500. So in this case, now if you go here, if we have a book, each book has something called a price. So each book has something called a price here. Each book has a something called a price here. But I want only those books whose are greater than 3500. Only those books whose price is greater than 3500. I don't want to see all of these books. So in this case, we wrote a condition here. So this is basically another expression that says that find me book, square brackets, and within the square brackets, we wrote greater than sign 35. So find me all the books that have a greater than 35 value. Similarly, we can even further uh, add more things to it. So we say, hey, find, go inside the book store, find a book whose price is greater than 35 has slash title. So select all the title elements. So this basically means that I actually want the title of all the books inside the bookstore that have price higher than 35. So give me title. Okay, so this will actually be, this will be returned. So the output will be basically your title. So give me title of all those books whose price is greater than 35. Simple. So see, now becomes even more complex expressions. So this is what an XPath does. It allows us to traverse and process the HTML things. You want to learn more about XPath? I have, as I said, I already have a detailed tutorial on my members page. Or if you want to wait a couple of months for this, do wait for it. It will be online very soon. So this is all for XPath as a short, quick tutorial. Hopefully you understand it. Do leave me your comments if you understand it. If you want to know more detail about it or you want to know more about the memberships, leave me a comment and I will update. Thank you for watching. This is Dr. Zishan signing off.